Hi, this is Brian from Profitless Media and Post. Today we're going to talk about how we can use our 3D camera in DaVinci Resolve Fusion to speed up our masking workflow. If you're already familiar with Fusion and DaVinci Resolve, I'll put a timestamp below where you can skip to the end of the video where I do a quick overview of the process that we're going to do. So we have our 3D scene here. We have our main footage in, which is 1920 by 1080. Then we have our undistorted plate, which is 2006 by 1128, which comes into our 3D scene. And you can see here we have our spotlight, we have our 3D point cloud and our camera, and we have our 3D text, which is already located behind these poles. I also have this shape 3D, which is a plane that is located where this furthest pole is. Then we have our camera renderer, which is set to the undistorted image size. We have our redistort that goes back to our HD format, and then our media out. So the process we're going to use for this is that we're going to use our 3D camera to stabilize this pole in 3D space, render that out to 2D so that we can rotoscope the pole. And once we have our mat, we're going to reproject it on the same card and bring it into our scene so that anything behind this pole will be occluded and anything in front of this pole will not be. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take this shape, I'm going to bring it over here by the undistorted. We're going to take our undistorted image and bring it right into our shape 3D. To illustrate this a little bit better, I'm going to take the shape 3D, I'm going to add a little bit more width to it so you can see what's going on. And so as we come in here closer, you can see what it's done is taking the entire image and mapped it onto the UVs of the card. But that's not what we want. We want the camera. We want it to be projected in 3D space. So let's grab our camera, and we're going to copy that camera. Come down here, and we'll paste it. And we'll paste it twice, because we'll need two cameras. We'll take this shape 3D. And once we select it, let's shift space and add a UV map 3D. And inside this UV map 3D, let's change the map mode to camera. And let's add our animated camera into the UV map 3D. Now we can see that we have our pole in 3D space. And if we go through the image, you can see that our pole is static and everything else is moving around it. And that's because we're projecting the camera onto a card that is located at that precise location. So this pole will be stabilized in 3D. So now we just need to convert that to a 2D image so we can do our rotoscoping. So we're going to take our UV map, we're going to add it into this Merge 3D. So we're just going to make another scene. And here we have the same exact camera. And after this Merge 3D, we want to add a camera renderer, a renderer 3D. Now if we throw that up there, one thing you may notice is that this Render 3D, by default, is going to go to the output size, which is 1920 by 1080. But we're working with an undistorted workflow, so we're going to need to change this. So let's go inside that Render 3D, and if we go over to the Image Settings, we can turn off auto resolution and let's just change the size of our image to 2006 by 1128. So now we're at the undistorted image size. So now if we take a look at this, both of these cameras are animated. So if we go through this right now, it's basically replicating what's in the original footage. But what we can do is take this camera here, make this camera static on one frame so that it'll capture our stabilized 3D, and then we can render it out to 2D so we can make our mat. So let's find a good frame that we can use. And I'll, I think frame 85 looks pretty good. So let's select our camera. And if it's not already unlocked, click on the Unlock, and go to the Transformation tab, and right-click on Translation, and Remove All from Translate Group. And we're going to do the same thing to the rotate group. So now the camera is just on that one frame. And if we step through, you can see that the pole is stabilized. And now we have a 2D image that we can do our roto shape on. 
So I'm going to press A for our, a Mac control. I have that connected to the Render 3D. And then we're going to bring in a polygon mask. And in that polygon mask, the polygon is going to be the same thing as the Render 3D. It's going to come in at the default size. So we need to change it the output size to custom and make sure that it's 2006 by 1128. Now I've already done the roto just to save us some time. So I'm just going to delete that one and paste in this one. And we're going to take this roto shape and put it right into the foreground of the Mac control. And then once we do that, we'll go inside the Mac control, change combine to combine alpha. At the bottom, we'll click on post multiply image. So now we have a masked out version of our pole that we can reproject onto the same card that we had here at the beginning. Let's grab the shape 3D and the UV map and we'll copy that. Bring it over here and paste it. And we're going to take our map control and go into the, oops, got that backwards. Let's just take our Mac control and put it into our Shape 3D. And we're going to use the same static camera into our UV Map 3D. And let's just organize this a little bit. And then we'll take this and add it into our 3D scene. And once we do that, and now you can see in our 3D space that we have our projected mat of the pole in 3D so we can occlude the 3D text behind it. So now let's go over to the camera renderer. And I just noticed something in the shape 3D. We need to make sure that the light is not affecting it. Otherwise we get this color change. So we just go to lighting, turn off affected by lights, and now we're back to the original color of the original image. Okay, so now you can see that we, by putting one roto shape on one frame, we were able to mask out this pole for the 3D text. Now I will mention that this isn't, this roto shape is only done on this one frame. And if we look at it closely, the thing is, is that we just put in a flat card to represent a cylindrical shape. So obviously when there's a lot of parallax, like there's a decent enough amount of parallax here, when it gets down to the end, you may have to do a little bit of an adjustment. Okay. So this is all well and good. And that looks great, except one of the problems we have here. And if we take out the main footage from the camera, and we take a look at our final image here, what we're doing is we're bringing this projected image over the top of our original footage. And we don't really want to do that because we're losing a little bit of quality. What we really want is this 3D text by itself, but where this pole is to be cut out. So let's see how we can do that. So I'm going to make a little bit more room here. We're going to take our media and our main clip and bring it over to where the redistortion is. And let's swap the inputs so that our, so that our original footage is in the background. Now let's work on our 3d. So we want to set this up so that we're only looking at the 3d text, but this pole is matted out. And we can do that by branching off two different renderers from our 3D scene, one for the pole and one for the text. I'm going to do one render here, and then I'm going to copy that render and paste it, and we'll make a second render here, and then we can merge them together before we add it into our redistortion. Let's work on the pole first. And one way we can do that is if we go into the 3D text, let's hit a shift space, and we want to add an override 3D. In this override 3D, the setting we want is under matte. Click on do matte and is matte. And once we do that, you can see now we just have in this render, we have just the pole. And if I press A, you can see we have a nice alpha channel for that pole. 
in this one here, we want just the 3D text with nothing else. And one way we can do that is if we grab another override 3D and holding shift, let's slide that in here. Make a, uh, I need a little bit more room for this. In this override that we have, we want to turn off the visibility of everything so that now there's nothing in the scene at all. Nothing's being rendered. And then we can take this 3D text and add it right in on top of the override 3D to make a merge 3D. So basically the override 3D is going to turn off the visibility of all the objects in our scene, but still pass through the lights and the 3D camera. Then we're going to merge that 3D text back in. And then when we render that out, we'll have just the 3D text. But one thing's missing, and that's the light, and that's because in the 3D scene, we just need to turn on pass-through lights. So now we have our 3D text. Now we just need to merge these two together. And one way we can do that is bring our camera renderer down here to create a merge. Make sure that the 3D text is coming through the foreground. And inside the merge, we can go to the operator and click on Holdout. And when we do that, you can see now we're getting a mask wherever that pole is. So as we go through, you can see, there we go. So then we're going to redistort that and bring it back over our original footage. By setting things up this way, we're losing none of our original image quality. And we also have full control over the look of our 3D text in our composite. So now we can use the same process we did on the first post on the next post, and we can end up with a result like this. So let's just do a quick overview of the process we just used. We have our media in here, which is HD resolution. We're using the distortion workflow, so we have the image undistorted. Then we have that undistorted image going into a card that's placed in 3D space precisely at the location of one of the poles. Then we have our UV map 3D, which we used our 3D animated camera to project our UVs here so we could stabilize the pole in 3D space. Then we created another 3D scene where we have, we have the camera frozen on frame 85 so that we can render out the stabilized version into 2D. Then we added a Mac control and added a polygon to mask out our object. Then we added it into a copy of the same card. Then we added a UV map again using the frozen camera so that we could add it into our 3D scene. Inside our 3D scene, we split off from two branches. The first branch here, we made a camera renderer that was just for the pole. And the way we approach that is that from the text 3D and then put an override 3D and selected the mat, do mat, and turned on is mat so that we got the alpha for the pole. In the second branch, we added an override 3D where we turned on the do unseen by camera, unseen by cameras, which cleared out everything in the 3D scene except for the 3D camera and the light. Then we used a merge 3D to bring in just our 3D text and render that out so we have the 3D text on its own. Then we merge those together. And in the merge, we use the operator held out so that our alpha from our pole would cut out the 3D text. Then we redistorted that and brought it over our original image. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you again in the next video.